The movie starts and a lady named Michelle was standing at her window looking outside. She was on the phone having an argument with someone. After the call ended, Michelle packed up lots of her personal things. She then left her house. Michelle drove her car far away from the city to a rural countryside area. While driving, her fiance Ben called Michelle's phone. She answered but did not speak. Ben told Michelle he was very sorry and begged her not to leave him like that, but Michelle hung up on him. Right after, Ben called again. This time, as Michelle looked at her ringing phone for a second, a big truck crashed into her car, making it roll over into a ditch on the side of the road. Michelle opened her eyes and found herself in a small room. She had a wound on her head and a needle was stuck in her arm connected to a saline drip. To her shock, Michelle saw that one of her legs was chained to a pipe. She grabbed a pole nearby and used it to pull her phone closer, hoping to call for help. But unfortunately, there was no phone signal. A man named Howard came downstairs and opened the door to the room. He claimed he had rescued Michelle from the car accident and was keeping her alive. Not believing him, Michelle carved the end of a wooden pole to make it sharper. The next time Howard entered, Michelle hit him in the face with the sharpened pole and tried to run away. But Howard quickly grabbed her and injected her with a sedative, making Michelle fall asleep again. When Michelle woke up again, Howard spoke to her calmly. He told Michelle there had been some kind of attack on the surface. Howard said the air outside was now unsafe to breathe. That's why he brought Michelle down into this underground bunker located beneath his farm to keep her safe. Howard took Michelle to a room with an airlock door. He wanted to show her what was happening up on the surface. But when Michelle looked outside through the airlock window, everything appeared normal. However, Michelle then noticed Howard's truck parked nearby with red paint on its side. She realized this was the same truck that had crashed into her car earlier. Michelle heard a loud clattering noise coming from outside the bedroom. Howard went and yelled at someone that Michelle could not see. Michelle left the bedroom and found a young man named Emmett. His arm was broken. Howard told Michelle that Emmett had knocked over a shelf, spilling food that was meant to last them a whole week. Emmett seemed friendlier than Howard. He told Michelle that he chose to join Howard in making the bunker they were in. Emmett said he actually saw the attack happen up on the surface. He described a very bright white flash of light. Emmett said this is when he ran to get inside the bunker quickly, and that is how his arm got broken. Howard made Michelle and Emmett sit with him for dinner like a family. Michelle had a friendly conversation with Emmett that seemed a bit flirty. This made Howard get very angry. He warned Michelle and Emmett not to act that way towards each other. When Howard was not paying attention, Michelle took his keys from him. Then there was a loud rumbling noise that came from above them. This distracted everyone and gave Michelle a chance to grab a beer bottle and hit Howard hard on the head with it. Michelle ran towards the airlock door, trying to get outside. She ended up standing in the airlock area between the outside world and the inside bunker. Howard begged Michelle not to go out, saying it was not safe out there. But then a woman appeared outside asking to be let in. However, this woman's skin looked very deformed and infected. Howard told Michelle strongly not to let this infected woman inside. The infected woman outside became more and more upset and started violently banging her head against the airlock door's glass. After seeing the infected woman, Michelle started to think Howard might be telling the truth. She began to listen to him. Howard said he was sorry for how he acted before. He admitted to crashing into Michelle's car on purpose. Then Howard told Michelle to stitch up and treat the wound on his head from the broken beer bottle. Over time, Michelle, Emmett, and Howard became friendlier with each other. They started working together like a real family. Howard let Michelle borrow some clothes that belonged to his daughter Megan who he had lost. He showed Michelle a picture of Megan. Michelle and Emmett also grew closer and bonded. Emmett told Michelle about how he had a chance to play sports at a university, but he chose not to leave town because he was afraid. Michelle recounted a story to Emmett about one time when she saw a little girl being abused by her dad at a hardware store. Despite her own difficult childhood, Michelle felt very bad that she walked away and did nothing to help that little girl being abused by her father. After that, the air filtration system stops working, and Michelle is the only one small enough to fit through the vents to reach the filtration room. She resets the system, but notices a ladder leading outside beneath a window. There's a distress message, help. 
scratched on the window with traces of blood on the letters L and P. On the floor, Michelle finds two bloody earrings that she recognizes as Megan's from a photo. She shows the photo to Emmett, who reveals that the girl in the picture is actually Brittany, a classmate who went missing some time ago. Michelle and Emmett realize that Howard poses a threat, and they decide they need to leave. Michelle and Emmett steal Howard's tools to make a makeshift biohazard suit and gas mask. Howard catches them with the stolen tools and brings out perchloric acid to dissolve them. He demands to know why they were trying to take his gun. Emmett confesses that he did it so that Michelle would respect him like she respects Howard. Howard seemingly forgives Emmett, only to unexpectedly shoot him in the head. Michelle finishes making the suit and tries to escape. Howard catches her, but she pushes the vat of acid toward him, causing him to slip and fall into it face first. She manages to climb over him and heads towards the exit. However, the acid eats through an electrical wire, starting a fire. Howard follows her, so she pushes a shelf onto him to slow him down. Climbing through the vents towards the filtration room, Howard tries to stab her through the vents with a knife. Despite his attempt to grab her, Michelle slams his hand, causing it to rip off. With the fire spreading through the bunker, Michelle puts on the suit and gas mask, preparing to leave. Once the chaos settles, Michelle notices birds flying above and decides to take off her mask to breathe the fresh air. She heads to Howard's truck and spots what she believes is a helicopter in the distance, but it turns out to be a huge alien hovercraft. Suddenly, the bunker explodes, drawing the craft towards the site. It releases a toxic green gas, so Michelle hurries to put her mask back on. Running to the barn, she discovers the infected woman's body. Peeking through cracks, she sees a worm-like creature surrounding the truck. When it leaves, she grabs the woman's keys and rushes to the truck. The creature chases her, trapping her inside the truck. The craft approaches, lifting the truck closer to its mouth. Michelle improvises a Molotov cocktail using a magazine, lighter, and wine bottle, and throws it into the creature's mouth. The creature drops the truck, which then explodes. Michelle drives away, leaving the chaos behind. Accidentally hitting Howard's mailbox, which reads 10 Cloverfield Lane, she switches on the radio and learns that those seeking refuge from the attacks can go to Baton Rouge, while those with combat or medical skills are needed in Houston. Approaching a sign directing to Baton Rouge straight ahead or left to Houston, Michelle decides to go left. As she heads in that direction, a thunderclap reveals a larger alien hovercraft concealed in the clouds. The movie ends here. Thanks for watching.